Hey everyone, this is Fidel Hacker, Asia Raven, and I'm back with my latest Geekery News Briefs, where I quickly go over some of the stuff that happened in geek and pop culture so that you have stuff on your radar. So, let's start. Of course, we're going to begin with the recent box office results, which I have opened up on my laptop. So, the box office for October 11 to 13, 2019 is Joker ended up topping the box office again with a weekend gross of 55.8 million dollars we have already done a review of the joker at the geek theory the link to that will be down in the comment section below if you want to check it out and it's doing well and it and yeah i think that its oscar chances are quite high now talking about oscar uh, chances it turns out that robert downey jr ended up uh, backing out of the oscar campaign which some people are saying that Robert Downey Jr. doesn't need, need an Oscar for his Iron Man role because he has done something iconic, but as far as I can tell, the fact that Joker is quite good and there there's legitimate uh, or a valid chance for Joaquin Phoenix to get a nomination for Best Actor, that ends up decreasing Robert Downey's uh, chances of uh, getting an Oscar nom as well. So. Yeah, it made sense for Robert Downey Jr. to step down, but yeah, let's see what Joker does next week with Maleficent 2 opening up as well as Zombieland 2. Now, as far as the other new releases are concerned, we have The Addams Family, which ended up debuting with $30 million, and I haven't watched The Addams Family movie yet, but... I am interested in it, but I think I'll end up watching it when it hits streaming. Then we have Gemini Man, which was Will Smith's solo film, and that ended up not doing quite well. It had a debut of $20.5 million, which is basically, it's being deemed a flop, especially because of those numbers and because of its current Rotten Tomato score, but... You know what, it's, it's Will Smith. Will Smith is still liked by many people and he has that Bad Boys movie coming up. So I think his career is, yeah, his, his career is doing well. While we're on the subject of uh, movies, Zoe Kravitz has been cast as uh, Catwoman in the upcoming Matt Reeves Batman movie. And while I kind of knew that they were going to go for a Catwoman of color, Zoe Kravitz wasn't my first choice. I was holding hope for Lupita Nyong'o or Janelle Monae, but Zoe Kravitz, I mean, I know her as an actress, especially because I've seen her in different stuff. She was in X-Men First Class, she is in Big Little Lies, she was in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them Part 2, but for me, Zoe Kravitz, Kravitz hasn't really stood out as an actress, so I'm, I'm kind of iffy about the casting choice. But you know what, let's see what happens. And it turns out that apparently Matt Reeves' upcoming solo Batman movie is going to be very diverse. They have already cast a Jim Gordon of color. And that would mean that Batgirl is going to be of color as well. Now, even though I'm okay with Catwoman being African-American, I was hoping to see a Latina Catwoman or maybe an Asian Catwoman. Like, I'm all for putting in diversity in films, but why not be broad about it why not give representation to asians why not give representation to uh, the latin community and all of that stuff like i would have preferred to see uh, a catwoman who's latina especially because i don't think we've ever seen that type of catwoman even in comic book film uh, comic book stories but let's see what happens as far as other casting news is concerned, Billy Porter, who is amazing in both, has been cast as the fairy godmother in the upcoming Cinderella story that Sony is doing. And apparently Camilla Cabello is going to be playing Cinderella, which I'm, I don't really care about uh, Cam uh, Camilla Cabello. But Billy Porter as the fairy godmother, it makes so much sense. I'm here for it and I'll end up watching this movie just because of him. While we're on the subject of Hollywood, it turns out that Gina Rodriguez ended up saying the N-word during her Instagram story where she was singing the lyrics to a song which had the N-word in it. And I'm like, Gina, people already think that you are anti-black. You have a history of anti-black instances. So why would you post such a thing on your Instagram? She immediately took it out, uh, took it down, and then she ended up uh, posting an apology. And in that apology, like, 
her apology didn't even make sense it was one of those apologies where they end up using the word if like i'm sorry if i offended you or i'm sorry if i offended anyone and i'm like if your apology contains the word if that's not an apology i think that gina ridiculous after posting that video she was forced by one of her pr people to make that an insincere apology I'm like, what's up with people like Gina Ridiguez who end up using the N word? Like, why do they do it? Why would they? Why would you even say the N word when you're a celebrity and you have a platform, and when you know that people are listening to every word you say? Why would you do that? Like, do you get off on it? Do you feel a sense of power? Like, what's up? On to some other news. So this was a very recent piece. Uh, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige has been made the Marvel chief creative officer and which means that he'll oversee all creative and story initiatives and this includes Marvel television, Marvel animation, all of the upcoming Disney Plus shows and I do think that this also contains comic book stories but not to but to a certain extent like he can't demand what he wants or not from storybooks uh stories not story books comic books but he can make certain requests which i'm not uh, i'm i'm not really sure how to feel about it i do think that kevin feige has a vision it's it was his vision that ended up create ended up helping this M the mcu become the box of a juggernaut that it already is but i don't want that influence on comic books i like marvel comic books especially when they do something different and hmm again i'm not really sure how to feel about this i don't want the upcoming x men or avenger comic books being more of these uh, promotional pamphlets for upcoming marvel movies than they already are but yeah time time will tell we'll end up finding out how how kevin feig ends up handling this position and yes he'll be overseeing the star wars content as well The last thing we're going to talk about is gaming related. So, if you guys don't know, Blizzard ended up getting into a lot of trouble after they banned a player for making pro Hong Kong opinions and it's an entire ordeal. People are not happy about it because of course when you are talking about free speech, when you're talking about democracy, you don't use China as an example. So yeah people who are into free speech they support Hong Kong they want democracy to be in Hong Kong they want democracy to be all around the world and Blizzard apparently because of course all of these big companies make a lot of money from China and this includes Blizzard Disney other mo- movie studios but but right now all of the all of the anger is targeted at Blizzard and yeah Blizzard isn't seem to be doing well recently they ended up canceling their Nintendo Switch Overwatch event the link to that will be down in the comment section below it's a very interesting story uh which i do urge that you guys read all of the links of our coverage will be down in the comment section below so make sure to check that out and and to see why people aren't happy with blizzard taking such a stance and why we, sh- we should all support freedom of speech So that's that for the Geekery News Brief. Let me know what you thought of the news pieces that I shared with you. Was there any news that you wanted me to talk about? Let me know about that down in the comment section below. And yeah, until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. I'll see you guys later.